We'll sing through the dark of the coldest night. We'll sing through the chill of dawn. We don't know how we came here, and we can't know when we'll leave. So we'll sing with deepest heartfelt hopes, and the places long since gone. And we'll cherish this time we have together, and we'll wish one another happy winter's feast. Uh, weather. But welcome, everybody, to Winter's Feast 2021. Now, while it might be looking very much like Winter's Feast 2020, there actually is some new fun to be had here and there. And with Wolfgang's rework somewhat overshadowing literally everything currently, I didn't want this event to go unnoticed. So then, let's feast on some gingerbread pigs, no less. Yes, folks, these event-specific mobs return. And while we'll occasionally catch them looking like this, most of our encounters will be ending up with them keeled over like this instead. And why is that, you ask? Well, because we will be literally hunting them down for cheerful holiday sports. Now, we could choose to just straight up murder these innocent creatures for loot, as you can see. However, it is best if we literally hunt them down by chasing them like we chase other hunts via suspicious dirt piles, for example. We do so by following a trail of stuff called cookie crumbles, and such hunts can get a bit difficult to follow sometimes, and they're usually much longer than others. But keep it up long enough, and you will have an 80% chance to eventually find a gingerbread pig village here. Three to five gingerbread pig houses can spawn in these villages, and they serve no other purpose beyond being hammerable for even more loots. There's nothing like destroying others to make yourself feel better, am I right? Especially this time of year. But hold up, Beard. What about that other 20%? What else could these wintry meals on wheels be leading us to? Well, this abomination right here. The Gingerbread Varg. Usually chowing down on unfortunate gingerbread pigs, instead of staring into our souls with their peppermint eye holes, gingerbread vargs are a hybrid of vargs, of course, and a eucus. Thankfully, however, these guys cannot call in more hounds to actually help them, but they will still trap us in their peppermint icing if we let them, so be mindful there. Kill him, though, and you will receive even more cookie crumbles and more of that holiday cheer crap that we have yet to talk about. So then, let's actually talk about it. Like these cookie crumble things, holiday cheer is edible. However, both won't be doing us much good on that front, if anything at all, as you can see. Oh, no, 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 no. If we want to make use of these things, we will need to create an event-specific structure known as a masonry oven here. Easily craftable with cut stone, marble, and wood, a masonry oven can and will then grant us access to the feast tab, of which has 18 additional crafts itself. These 18 quote-unquote foods all require some holiday cheer and some very specific ingredients to create. However, they are all essentially the same thing at the end of the day, and you'll understand why in a minute. For now though, go ahead and place down a few of these other new Winter's Feast tables too, and be sure to connect them together to benefit yourself and the team. But how so? Well, because when these quote-unquote foods eventually find their way to these tables, every player can then feast on them together for bonus stat restorations. A special buff kicks in that regenerates 0.5 health every second, 10 sanity per minute, and 75 hunger per day. However, the timer on this buff solely depends on the number of players feasting and how many unique dishes are in play, mind you. Eventually, the feast will cease. However, you will still keep this buff for a bit of time, which is indicated through a wintry sparkle all around you. And funny enough, if you find yourself dying shortly after getting this buff, you yourself will drop some holiday cheer. It's all good, fun stuff. Even if it's all lie. But here's no lie, everyone. Deer clops, or should I say feast clops, can now fire frickin' lasers out of its eyeball. 
Folks, some of our seasonal and Rage Boss friends have gone and gotten a makeover for this holiday season, and this here is one of them. We also have Yeti Bearger to look forward to come our second autumns and beyond. Moose Goose is really taking the goose that looks like a moose thing seriously this year. And finally, Dragonfly has got some bobbly eyes to spy. But enjoy the new dues. Oh, but we can't talk changes to bosses come Winter's Feast without mention of Claws and his loot stash, folks. For you see, not only will the latter be able to be found and therefore opened during any season 20 days apart until the end of the event, Claws himself has dressed for the occasion too. That and his gem deer, which is kind of fun. Very cool even if the fight is the exact same as it's ever been. That said, the loot from the fight is an entirely different story. During Winter's Feast, two additional bundles will drop. However, note how all bundles have turned into gifts instead, which is just a great touch. But these two new bundles are guaranteed to drop electric milk, some Winter's Feast foods, baubles, festive lights, and adornments. What the heck is any of that, you ask? Well, magnificent adornments here are boss-themed and dropped decorations, everyone. As you can see, there is a plenty to go around and collect from seasonal to raid bosses alike, and some even drop multiple types to boots. And this year, we also have the opportunity for six new adornments too, corresponding to the Celestial Champion and its many phases, and even the eye slash twins of terror from the very recent Terraria crossover events. Great stuff. Champion and appeasing adornments, though, are another set of decorations from the Forge and Gorge events and are gotten via Christmas gifts when sleeping under Winter's Feast trees. But more on that later. And finally, 2020 saw the introduction of sentimental adornments, both of which are specific to the Krabby Hermit, aka Pearl here. Finish your house, and you can buy the Hermit Home decoration for 8 empty bottles, or choose to complete her entire quest in order to purchase her Pearl Bottle for more empty bottles. Enjoy! But come on now! What's winter decor without actual ornaments? Festive baubles here can also now be found out there in the world. However, not everywhere, mind. All mobs besides tentacles, frogs, and killer bees will have a whopping 0.5% chance to start dropping these things, while Claus's loot stash should give one each time. All that said, fishing in the oasis here is also an option too, so don't forget it. Festive lights are a thing as well, however they only drop from claws, feast clops, and the oasis like here, so make notes. These things though are entirely worth it, as they last for 160 days, throw out infinite albeit inconsistent lights, can refuel light sources, and will even change the color of glow caps too, as you can see. Light it up. And finally, winter foods. Like Hollow Knight's candy, but way, way better. They have a 20% chance to drop from pretty much all mobs in the game. And these foods will never spoil. They will restore some stats and can even change our temperatures on the fly if needed. Now, all survivors will avoid eating the eternal fruitcake, while others can only eat certain numbers of these foodies, as some count as meat and veggies at the end of the day. But whatever the case, they are a fun snack to have, and can even count as decorations too. But yes, how and what are we even decorating with all this crap beard? Well, that would be any tree planted within a festive tree planter. Be them evergreens, birch nuts, or even twiggy trees. Once they are fully grown, we can open them up in order to place all sorts of baubles, lights, foods, and adornments on them for not only our own pleasure, but also for greed. For you see, if we sleep underneath and nearby these decorated trees, a little someone might leave behind some presents, regardless of whether or not we were naughty or nice this year. That said, what will matter is how greedy we actually are now and then, and how decorated these trees were when we decided to sleep. 
So make note there, but have fun. And last, but certainly not least, gift wrap. This event-specific craft is now available off-spawn and each recipe is going to provide four gift wraps each for a little cost, and that is absolutely insane considering how gift wrap here is essentially bundling wrap without having to get the blueprint for it yourself. Food spoilage mechanics and all. Oh yes, folks, it is honestly one of the best crafts in this entire game. So you better not cry if you happen to miss out on them this year. Take advantage. And there you have it, everyone. Winter's Feast 2021 for Don't Starve Together. Now, lots of the same, but still several new things to do and appreciate this year. And that's okay with me. Happy Winter's Feast. Thanks for watching, folks. Well wished to all. Happy holidays in real life. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.